also my reviews have nothing to do with the authors um, I could never write a book so I admire them for that however the stuff that some people write <laughs> okay we're just going to get into it and look at all the books I'm excited to revisit some stories um, if you're curious on what I read in 2022 I dear ranked all those books as well It's also not a forgettable. 
is Ariadne Ariadne one of my most recent reads and this follows the daughter this follows the daughter of Persephone and um, Minos Kid Minos right and uh, Persephone her mother gives birth to a minotaur because she
time. It is a Greek mythology retelling about Circe, who is the daughter of Helios and uh, Percy, her mother. So, Circe and Ariadne are related because Persephone is Circe's sister. So, Circe would be Ariadne's aunt. Okay? That's the family lore. <laughs> such a feminist badass book Cersei um, Cersei gets banished for helping a god who is being punished the family finds out they banish her to this island where she lives she's a nymph and so kind of a witch you know and her connection to nature and her her development, her character development throughout the story is so beautiful and empowering. She, as a character, is just so empowering. And, like I said, I think about her all the time. I'm currently rereading the book, so that's nice. I love that book. I... Okay, we'll go into favorites at the end of this, but it might be my favorite. I don't know. Then we have... Elizabeth McKenzie. 
Her partner in a helicopter accident remarries 
it started off as enjoyable but forgettable and it ended up in oh no it's about what's going on on our planet and not in an ecological way but just generally with media with mental health with all these social aspects and that's not new information to me so <laughs> no it just felt very simple Which is a good thing, but it, it was also relatively slow paced. 
same goes for Lolly Willows by Sylvia Townsend Warner. It's a good story. It's well written about a witch in England. Um, moves out on her own to a cottage. It's just forgettable. I was late to the book. 
which was also scrumptious and so good and had me hooked hooked such a unique story loved it um next up we have the power of now and i'm currently listening to that on audible i'm gonna say it's enjoyable but forgettable it's by eckhart tolle and it's a guide to spiritual spiritual enlightenment it's a lot about being in the present but i talked about that in my november uh reads so once again you should read watch that video if you want my full opinion but it's just it's not hitting for me um which is sad next up let's do the wicked king and the queen of nothing i think i'm gonna rate both of them as absolutely scrumptious because i enjoyed this series so much and i can't wait for next year to read um the stolen air and the there's another book coming out from her, right? The second one to The Stolen Air. I want to be in that world again. I really do. I was hesitant on reading the fourth book this year, but I know that I was so focused on Garden and Jude that I would be disappointed to read The Stolen Air because it doesn't really follow them. Um, they're not main characters in the story. So I thought it would be best to take some distance now I can't wait to delve into that world again. The Wicked King was probably my favorite in the series. The Queen of Nothing is a beautiful third book. Um, it's always scary to get a third book in a trilogy, and um, you just have to hope that it does what you hope it does. Um, it really did. I just think that the ending could have been stronger. That's all. fantasy, you'll at, le you'll at least enjoy this. I really think you will. The reading list. The reading list was enjoyable but forgettable. It was sweet and wholesome, but also sad. Um, but it, it didn't leave a mark. The Secret History. Oh my god. Scrumptious. So good. I was fascinated throughout this story. It was crazy. It was Dark Academia. You've probably heard about it. If you've ever touched a book and are on the internet quite a lot, <laughs> you'll have heard about this book. Um, but I really understand the hype, and I think you should read it too, if you have time. I, I, this is definitely a book that I wouldn't recommend rushing through. Siddhartha, and I am going to rate that one as a Roman Empire book. It is by Herman Hesse, and it is a book about the Buddha and his becoming of the Buddha. I should have put this in presentation mode because now it's just... <laughs> anyway, I, uh, yeah, it's just really good, and I think a lot about the quotes from the book. enjoyable but forgettable is a very 
person so much and I just, I get it, <laughs> you know, I get it. It's very sweet and I can't wait to someday refer back to the book when I feel like it. <sighs> then a classic, Leo Tolstoy's The Death of Ivan Ilyich. Death, grief, pain, definitely a story that my therapist has heard about. <laughs> It's very good, but the theme of the book was just, no, no, not for me. <laughs> then we have Yellow Face by R.F. Kuang, and that was scrumptious. It was so good and bizarre and just nuts. It follows the perspective of a woman who um, steals a story and her whole process beyond that and her brain, <laughs> her thoughts are messed up and it's so fascinating. Then we have left The Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller and Untamed by Glenn and Doyle. And these are Roman Empire books for me, both of them. I'll put them on top of the list and then I'll talk about them with you. The Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller follows um, Achilles and Patroclus
what I got to read this year. Like I said, this is my only year likely in my life that I'll read so much and consume so much literature. And I really made the most of it, I think. It was a very exploratory year for me in what I like to read. Um, and I'm just glad that I got to live in all these worlds because it has done so many good things for my mental health. stuff. Um.